In this video, I am going to show you how I will be testing the circuits that you turn in as uh, in the labs. And this is also a tool that can help you test your own circuit if you want to use a systematic way to do it. What you see here is a um, circuit tester. Um, very simple one, but it is still a circuit tester. This is a counter. Okay, if you click on it, you can see that it is a counter. Uh, the number in the counter is an 8-bit number, so it can go from 0, 0 in hexadecimal to FF in hexadecimal. FF in hexadecimal is 255 in decimal. This thing over here is a comparator. Uh, it is comparing the first input to the second input. And then the output here are individual bits. If this bit is a 1, that means the first input, the top input, is greater than the bottom input, which is the case here because the output of this counter is currently 0, 0. zero 3 is greater than 0, 0 is true, and that's why the output pin corresponding to greater than is a 1. But this output pin is not connected to anything in this circuit, so it's okay. I mean, it doesn't really do anything. But when it does, when it's equal to or less than the output of the counter, then the OR gate will OR the two inputs, and then the output will become a 1. This output pin is labeled HALT HALT for a reason. In the command line mode of Logisim, when a pin called HALT is a 1, it will automatically stop the clocking and in and it will just uh, it will stop running I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean by that and this piece here is called a ROM read-only memory you can change the content of ROM by right-clicking on it and then go to edit contents so in this case if I want to change the content I just go to a location such as this location here, and then I just type over it with, uh, if I want to change this to 0, 0 for instance, I just type 0, 0, and now it is changed. You don't have to save anything. If you click save, it means you're, you're saving the current content of the ROM into a file, but the content of the ROM is a part of the circuit file anyway, so unless you want to save it into explicitly into a separate file, you can go ahead and do that. The, um, so this missing piece here is where the test circuit is supposed to fit. So let me show you something else at this point. I'm, I'll show you the command line interface at this point. This is the folder. Test driver is what you just saw in Logisim, this piece over here. I will have two more files in order to test a circuit. So for grading purposes, I would also have a reference design, which is usually a sim link to uh, a particular circuit that I want to uh, test your circuit with. Um, but on the other hand, um, if you are only if you're testing your own circuit, then you will only have one single file, which is your own circuit here. So the way this works is in my circuit. I will have a, um, I will go to project and use load library and point it to Logisim library and then I will point it to reference.circ which is what we know as a sim link in Linux. In Windows, I do not know whether they have um, a sim link or not. I know they do have hard links, but I'm not sure whether they have soft links or sim links. If they don't, then you can just make a copy of a file, but then those two files won't be linked anymore. So when I click open, you can see that in the toolbox here, I have a new, uh, basically a new drawer to my toolbox. And in this particular case, because I did not change the name of the design, I just call it main. So I just plug it into my main circuit here. And now I'm not going to make any connections just yet. I just pop it into the design here. And this is basically the main circuit from my reference library, which is really just a circuit file in Logisim. So if I carefully place this, okay, let me just do this. Uh, the right way. So I'm going to delete these wires over here just to make sure that um, 
I don't have a problem connecting all the wires. So once I put it over here, I can now connect the wires again. And there we go. So you might wonder what is in the reference design? What is main in the reference design? To do that, we can click, uh, use the selection tool, click on the uh, component, right click on it, and then view main. And you can see that this is a very simple buffer. A buffer basically is, uh, it just mirrors whatever is the input to the output. That's all it does. Now, if I go back to the main uh, circuit of the test driver, I can manually click the clock to see how the input changes the output. So right now the input um, is 0, 01 to the circuit being tested because location 00, 00 of the ROM has a content of 0, 01 and that 0, 01 is presented on the input of the test circuit being tested because the circuit being tested is just mirroring the input to the output and that's why the output is also just 0, 00, 00, 00, 00, 00, 00, 01 in binary. So nothing is really surprising over here. Um, if I uh, change the clock, it will change on the falling edge. The counter will count up on the falling edge, which means when the clock goes from 1, which is bright green, to 0, which is dark green, it will increment its value, like now. So 0, 1 is now the address in the ROM, which means the location 0, 1 or the element 0, 1 in the ROM is now being addressed. The content or the value of that location is 0, 02. So 0, 02 is what the D port or the data port is outputting. And because the component being tested is just a buffer, so its output is really just the same content as its input. But doing this means I would now have a way to automate the test. Now I can finish this manually, okay, like this. And now I stop. The reason why I'm stopping is because at this point, the uh, constant of connected to the top part of the comparator now has the same value as the output of the counter. So the equal to pin becomes a, uh, I should say port. The equal to port of the comparator is now a one. And that means you know the whole pin is now a one. When I run, Logisim in GUI mode, which is what we are doing right now, this doesn't mean a single thing. Okay, you know, in other words, if you continue to toggle the clock, it will keep going, like so. Now let's go ahead and try to run the same circuitry, but in on the command line mode. So the way to do that is to go to a command line. Now obviously I'm doing this in Linux. Um, if you want to do this in Windows, it's going to be about the same, but the syntax is going to be slightly different. So the first thing we do is we type java-jar, and then the location of logisim310.jar is in a parent folder in this case. So in Linux, I use dot dot slash, but in Windows, you would use dot dot backslash, the other slash. So now, if I do this, it's um, just going to start up logisim. So I wanted to test, uh, use the test driver circuit, so I supply that as an argument to Logisim. Now if I just run this, it would just run it in GUI mode, which is exactly what we saw over here. And at this point, I can actually turn, uh, I can close Logisim, and really just kind of focus on uh, the command line over here. So now I can supply some additional uh, what we call switches in CLI, in command line interface. So we can specify dash TTY. TTY stands for teletype, which is um, a very old type of terminal people used to use. It looks like an electric typewriter because it really is an electric typewriter, but it also has a serial interface to a mainframe computer so that people can actually use the typewriter to interact with a mainframe computer. But TTY today simply means that there is a text serial interface to something, and that's what this means. And then we specify table over here, which means the output is going to be presented in quote unquote a table. Um, and then we also have the supply, uh, nope, this is all we need to do. So I press the enter key, and this is the output of the program. Uh, 
kind of ignore the last line here. Be that's because I was running uh, the GUI mode of Logisim in the background. So if I run the same command line again, it would not have that message. So what this is showing us, the first column is corresponding to the counter. And you can see how the counter is counting from 0 to 1. This is 2 in decimal or 1, 0 in binary. This is 3 in binary. Uh, this is 3 in decimal, which is 1, 1 in binary. So the first column is giving you the count. The second column is giving you the input into the test circuit. And then the last column is giving you the output from the test circuit. So as far as you're concerned, this is all you need to know. Right, because you know you just need to know a way to consistently test your circuit. However, from my perspective, um, I need to test a circuit, but I need to compare the output of your circuit um, to a reference design that I'm going to make that I will hold as a secret until the homework assignment is due. Then I will show you my circuit as well. So in this case, let me show you all the files in this folder. So in this case, reference.circ is actually what we call a symlink. In other words, when I refer to the file reference.circ, it really is you know, referring to buffer.circ, which is basically just a buffer circuit that I have just shown you earlier. So when I'm grading a homework assignment or grading a lab submission, um, instead of using the reference design, I would have to change it to the design that is a submission. I can uh, relink the reference. Uh, I can relink the sim link, but I can also use also use a really kind of cool feature. So if I go back to this command, I can now supply another switch, which is called substitution. So what substitution does is it allows me to name a library that we have linked earlier, which is you know, reference.circ earlier. And I can now name a substitution to that. So instead of using the buffer, I can now use the inverter circuit. In other words, when I run the CLI or the command line interface mode of Logisim this time, instead of using reference.circ as the linked library, which supplies main as a circuit, that is connected to the main tester circuit, it's going to choose main from inside inverter.circ, which is really just an inverter, to run this particular um, example. So when I run it, you can see how the counter stays the same, the input into the test circuit stays the same, but the output of the test circuit is not exactly the opposite of what we had because the inverter circuit is, as the name implies, is exactly inverting every one to a zero and every zero to a one. So this is how I would grade your homework assignment, is I would extract all the circuit file that you submit, and then I have a script to pick up every single one of those circuit files, and I would use the last switch over here. Instead of using inverter.circ, this will be a circuit file that is specific to your submission. And this allows me to compare the output of running uh, Logisim in CLI mode to the reference output. If they are different, then I know the design does not work the way it is supposed to. And if they are identical, then I know they, are, they, they perform exactly the same way. So this is how your homework or your lab submission is going to be tested. So what I'll do next is I'm going to zip up this entire folder so that you can also have a copy of this to play with it. Just keep in mind, in Linux, you we have symlink, which means I can change what reference.circ is referring to. But in Windows, you probably are better off just by uh, copying some other circuit file into the name of reference.circ.